what would be the evolutionary advantage possibly of all these apocalyptic myths, the end, end of the world? There have been, over the millennia, there have been many, many very powerful stories of the world ending with great terror and brimstone and so forth. What would possibly be the evolutionary advantage of the recurrence of these I, story. I think it's a great question, and we don't know. Um, again, this, this is, to me, it's one of the most fascinating things about storytelling in all of its guises, from children's pretend play, you mentioned dreams, to adult fictions. It's that they are much closer to hellscapes than heavens. What, what attracts us about going into hell? I mean, you're describing well, it sometimes they, it's hell. because they tell you how to behave in, in, in light of the apocalypse that's coming, and then that, that binds a community together with, sh with shared conduct. Could be, but we always. also do it automatically. Little children do it automatically in their storytelling. It's very trouble-centered. Uh, worlds of uh, developmental psychologists described it as pretend worlds are worlds of great chaos, flux, and mayhem. Um, and that's what you, and we find the same thing in your fiction. You're telling us a story that's a nightmare. To be in that world in real life would be just an absolute nightmare. You're talking our, about my childhood, you know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, spontaneous stories we tell in dreams. dreams. Dreams are kind of night stories. We have hours of them every night. We're the protagonists. We're facing obstacles. Uh, dream scientists call a dream. This is a conventional uh, definition. A uh, hallucination within a narrative context. Uh, halluc a hallucination within a narrative context. They're night stories. And they're also miserable places to be. You do not want to live in dreamland. Thank goodness dreams don't come true. But I'll, but I'll make one qualification, and it's open for a lot of debate, which is we've been talking right now as if this attraction to trouble, to the hellscapes, exists only in things we know to be fictional. But there's at least some cases where the same appetite happens when we hear about the real world. My 13-year-old was very excited yesterday, he's talking to me for a long time, about the zombie guy in Florida who ate somebody's face. He's like, incredibly cool. And then he was even more delighted to hear that somebody in New Jersey threw his intestines at somebody. Um, the, 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 the number one story of my lifetime uh, that enraptured the most people was the O.J. Simpson trial. And, and it, wasn't, it wasn't, oh, if only this were fiction, how interesting it would be. We have some of this appetite and trouble extends to the real world.